started. Share the screen, sleepy slender, share. And PowerPoint, let's go. All righty. Thank you, Andrew. Absolutely. So as Lori, um, Lori mentioned, uh, we're starting Sleepy Slender is a program that we're running through our clinics, um, all, all five of our locations. Um, our nurse practitioners are um, uh, super engaged in the process. It is a medically supervised weight loss program. Um, you know, the idea behind the program is uh, a lot of the patients that we see are, you know, of course, suffering from obstructive sleep apnea. And a lot of times with obstructive sleep apnea, it's weight related. Um, and with un un uh, obstructive sleep apnea, it makes weight loss very difficult. Um, a lot of people with sleep disorders uh, will benefit from losing any weight, like any sort of weight loss with obstructive sleep apnea. Not only does it help the, the body, of course, but it also helps uh, lower uh, the chance of having obstructive sleep apnea. So anybody with even like 20 pounds to lose will be beneficial to this. Um, the program is going to focus on the health benefits of losing weight. Um, the idea is we're going to, this isn't just a crash splash diet where a lot of people will, you know, lose a bunch of weight at first. And then after they're done, they'll start to to gain it back. Um, it's going to help, uh, the patients utilize, uh, a healthier, uh, achieving a healthier weight, um, education, nutrition, supporting through our Facebook group. Um, we we're, we're supporting patient accountability help with appetite suppressant and uh, learning your triggers to see what may or may not be the reasons that you eat or have overeaten or uh, that maybe has led you to being heavy. Um, we're also going to be going over natural energy enhancing supplements. So uh, one of the, pro one of the uh, concepts that we use is intermittent fasting. Um, some people have heard of this, some people have not. Um, we're also going to be using uh, you know, nutrition and calorie education, good sleep hygiene, appetite suppressants, um, understanding hydration, like fluids and such, and how that plays a huge role on your diet, um, your digestion, as well as like your hunger. Um, and we have a Facebook uh, accountability group and that does exercise motivation and different variables like that. So our initial program is 12 weeks long. It doesn't necessarily mean you're only going to be stuck with us for 12 weeks. Um, and I don't use stuck with us as a loose term, kind of um, more or less is after the 12 week program, um, depending on how well you've progressed, we may follow up monthly, you know, every few months, every six months, if you're progressing well, it just, it's, it kind of depends on where you're at in the program. But the initial like buckle down is 12 weeks long. So some things to consider when you're going into weight loss. Um, how motivated are you to lose weight? That's a huge motivating factor. Is, um, I mean, in my life, um, I, I used to be overweight myself, and I was incredibly motivated to not be. And my particular thing was um, I got sick and tired of being made fun of. It gets old, um, and your friends call you fat and stuff like that. So I, my motivation was I want to show them, prove them wrong. Um, are you distracted? Um, there's a lot of things going on in life. You know, we have the, of course, the quarantining, we have COVID, we have different variables and how, how distracted are you in life? Um, what are you, what are you using food for? Do you use it to cope with stress? Is your life incredibly stressful right now? Um, how ready are you to learn different techniques and strategies to lose weight? How much support do you need? Um, is it from, you know, family, friends? Is it, do you need it from professionals? Do you need it from like within yourself, can you support your own self? Um, how, how do you want to change your eating habits? Um, do you want to change activity levels? Are you into the exercise realm? Is that, is it, have you ate well, but you, you suffer from, you know, I don't have enough physical activity and do you have time to do this? That's a huge factor. So the initial visit, um, we're going to do a physical exam, of course, in lab or in office. It's going to be an hour-long appointment. We do an echocardiogram to check your heart function. We want to get recent lab work, um, hopefully something within the last three months. Otherwise, we'll send you, send an order out to go get some blood work done. Um, and of course, if we see anything abnormal, we'll uh, send you to your primary care for adjustments and different things like that. But there's a huge list of paperwork, obviously. It's a first visit, so just like visiting any office, there's paperwork. So it just guides us to a uh, better understanding of where you are in your uh, weight gain, weight loss journey. 
So uh, intermittent fasting is one of the techniques we use. Um, the most common intermittent fasting technique is what's called a 16-8 window, where a person will find a 16-hour time frame during the day. And during that time frame, they don't eat. You know, really, there's no calorie consumption. You can drink water, you can have uh, tea, uh, black coffee, but really limited on food. Uh, there's no, no, no calories. But during the eight hour window, such as, as you can see on this, uh, this, this gram, so 12 to eight, you're eating food, getting plenty of nutrients. You're trying to uh, obtain at least enough calories throughout this time frame to not only sustain your body through the 16 hour window, but also not overindulge to where you actually will lose weight. And uh, so intermittent fasting has a lot of benefits. It's a lot of internal health benefits. It's not just for weight loss, but it can help control insulin levels, uh, human growth hormone levels. Um, it helps reduce blood pressure, and lowers uh, cholesterol. It can boost, boost the metabolism for blood loss or for weight loss, I'm sorry. Um, it goes, uh, there's a removal of waste materials from cells. Your body goes through this, um, this phase called autophagy which is like a really cool word of saying it's just your body eating out internal toxins in your body, in the cells, in your digestive system, and just kind of pushing that out of you, which is where your body's, uh, it helps your body's recovery. Um, one other factor that we discuss is um, a part of your diet is hidden calories, uh, such as in beverages. So a lot of drinks have a lot of mystery calories. Um, here's a good idea of what a person may consume uh, liquid-wise in a day. I mean, if you have orange juice for breakfast, which is, I mean, I like orange juice as much as, much as the next person, but it's 110 calories, okay? You know, if you choose to have like um, some, some flavored coffee or something in the morning, like a latte, as you see, is 250 calories. And then sodas, sodas are intense incredibly awful ca uh, calorie bombs, incredible amount of sugar in soda, an incredible amount of calories, 140 calories in a Coke, can of Coke, 12 ounces of Coke. And now with a lot of the people we work with, they tend to be generally fairly sleepy during the day. So they may choose a mid afternoon pick me up like a coffee and just a simple coffee with creamer, 58 calories. Now, obviously, if you consume maybe a drink, a, a glass of wine or some lemonade or something at dinner, you can consume 800 plus calories just from liquids. So cutting those calories or at least eliminating the majority of those, that can lead to significant weight loss. Um, I've had patients that will say that they'll drink you know, 64 ounces of soda in a day and they'll cut their, they'll cut their sugar intake and they'll lose 20 or 30 pounds in a few months because they trim soda. So um, hydration. So what else, what can you drink? Um, obviously water is a win. Um, there's nothing in water besides water, but water gets boring. So stuff like these uh, natural sweeteners, uh, like this water drop stuff can make, you know, water better. Um, Zevia is a win. I really am a big fan of Zevias. They're, uh, they taste basically just like soda. Like I really, really are just to me, no difference. And they have no calories in them. They're excellent. Um, there's no aspartame in them like you get in diet soda. So there's the, you don't have the negative effect of aspartame. So hydration. Um, hydration, what it also does is it can help prevent a person from feeling overly hungry. Um, we have stretch receptors in our stomach and it's a, almost always a good idea to when we're falling or when we're getting ready to eat food is to drink water. For example, this hydro flask that I have is a 32 ounce hydro flask. First and foremost, I start my day by pounding this whole thing. It's a lot of water to take in one setting. Um, I don't recommend starting at 32 ounces, maybe at 20 ounces or so, but what you get is you start your day hydrated, which also helps open the stretch receptors in your stomach. And especially when you've been fasting, you've been fasting all night long, you may wake up a little hungry. So it prevents the need to have like a little snack when you start your day or a, a breakfast and can help facilitate your ability to get to your eating window. 
And this, of course, chart here goes over the levels of hydration with you uh, as according to your, your pee. Obviously, the browns and the dark browns are not a window we want to be in. So amino acids. Um, amino acids is a natural kind of a helpful uh, energy promoting uh, supplement. Amino acids are basically the building blocks of protein. They help facilitate protein synthesis in your body. Um, they help muscle growth and they can lower cravings. They can naturally give more energy. Um, amino acids is something that I take every morning. Um, it's just along with some as other like supplements like zinc and uh, my uh, multivitamins some joint supplements every morning. They, again, can help you with your fast. So amino acids, the kind of scheduling we want to work with would be in conjunction with your fasting. So you'd want to take two pills right kind of right around the same time you're breaking the fast. Um, something, something with food or something with like a protein shake or something. Um, a couple more amino acids later in the day uh, with a second meal. And then of course, more amino acids later in the day. Um, and we, we have a uh, company that we use that will help supply the amino acids. The, the nurse practitioners have all that information at their appointments. So fentramine is also a supplement that we work with. Um, not all patients will get fentramine. Um, fentramine is a, it does help with the initial, like lighting the fire to burn, help burn some weight. Um, it's a weight loss supplement. It's particularly the reason we want to do the EKG in office because we want to determine your heart health. If your heart's having arrhythmias or it's not quite functioning to its greatest capacity, this wouldn't be a supplement that we'd want you on. Um, but fentramine for a lot of people can jumpstart their metabolism, get the process moving a little faster. Um, so the amino acid, acid distribution, we're going to definitely want to start getting a person on those uh, very quickly. Um, the fentramine would be determined on your second visit after you, we get the EKG done. And if the heart health is available or your heart health is good, we're going to want to, if fentramine is a direction you would like to go, we're going to want to get that, the ball rolling to light that fire. Um, when we give multiple different uh, prescriptions for fentramine throughout the visit timeframes. So an idea about your day plan or your meal plan. <clears throat> So you're gonna be fasting. So time frame to break your fast, say 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, noon, whatever the case is, you break your fast. You're gonna take your amino acids, maybe you take your fentramine at that time, you eat a breakfast. Breakfast, maybe a smoothie, uh, a Quest Whey smoothie, a plant-based smoothie, something that's going to give you some nutrients. Nutrient-dense food is also super important. Um, egg whites, um, some like lots of vegetables, green leafy vegetables. Um, I'm a big fan of like, if you do like an egg white omelet with um, some, some mushrooms and some spinach, that's solid. That's gets, that gets a lot of protein. There's very low calories or low, very low carbs in that. And that just really puts some food in your body. Um, you're gonna be hydrating throughout the day. You can take amino acids right before your lunch. Um, again, Lunch, you want some nutrient-dense food again. Um, you can consume carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are fine. Overindulging in carbohydrates, and especially if you're not using them, that's where the, the weight gain happens because carbohydrates facilitate in your body as sugars. And sugar is energy, but if it's unused energy, sugar turns into fat. So good nutrient-dense carbo uh, carbohydrates like you know brown rice, or quinoa, something like that. Um, maybe a snack or a smoothie later in the day. Um, we've thrown around protein bars, but protein bars are very good. Um, this kind of depends on if it fits your caloric intake. Uh, continue hydrating. Dinner, you can have a, another, as long as it's, the dinner itself is, again, real whole foods, and then you have your smoothie or more protein. Protein is gonna be, is huge. You wanna try to consume at least one gram of protein per, per pound of body weight. That's always a solid, uh, solid goal. And then start your fast. So uh, counting calories. Uh, calories uh, is really one of the major bases of losing weight. There's a lot of weight loss programs 
we've, we've heard of like the South Beach diet. You've got like um, the paleo diets and there's a thousand diet plans out there in the world. And the one thing that they have in common and the one thing that works is limiting calorie intake. That's the only way you're going to burn fat is our goal would be to, for a person to lose about one to two pounds a week naturally. It's a very healthy way to lose weight. Again, we don't want a crash diet to where a person is like losing 10 or 15 pounds in a week. That's not sustainable. That's crashing your metabolism. Your body's going to end up eating it all back on. Um, so one of the things that we're going to talk about is understanding a basal metabolic rate. That's how many calories your body actually needs to survive, um, getting into a caloric deficit. And if you can cut up to 3,500 calories, say in a week, that's one pound of fat. So if you can burn 500 to 1,000 extra calories or cut that, then that's at least that's one to two pounds per week. Uh, MyFitnessPal is something we encourage our patients to get on. Um, the main reason is that it does a very good job of breaking down what you're putting in your body. Um, it's a very good um, app. It, it connects to a lot of uh, different so uh, devices, software like Fitbits and Garmin's and such that have direct connections. Plus, this is where you can connect with other people regarding their their goals. And uh, we have a, a Valley Sleep Center uh, group that we're using in MyFitnessPal. Um, getting active and staying active. Um, a lot of people look at the only way to lose weight is diet or exercise. And in all reality, it's a conjunction of both. But preferably dialing in your diet a little bit and then increasing energy or increasing energy expenditure is going to accelerate weight loss. Um, it burns through excess calories. You can, um, of course, strength train, cardiovascular training, running, even going for a longer walk. Um, you know, studies show that people who maintain their weight loss over the long term get regular physical activity. They're consistently active. Now, a lot of the calories you burn obviously depends on the frequency, how often you're doing this, what are you doing for, for exercise, um, you know, cardiovascular, uh, like running and biking and such does a really good job of burning calories while you're doing it. Strength training, which with weights or in a gym, obviously we're going to close down again for the gyms, but strength training builds muscles, which breaks down muscle fibers. Muscle fibers have to uh, regenerate, which burns calories for it to do it, uses energy, plus is where you need the extra protein because you're broken down your muscle fibers. Um, any, and any extra movement helps burn calories. Um, getting up, walking around the house, taking walks, uh, you know, obviously it's a trillion degrees outside. So getting up super early is, it would be the case, which is difficult for some people or going out later in the evening. Um, but going up and down stairs, using an elevator, that sort of stuff. So a couple things, um, one of the, one really important, uh, variable is planning ahead. So planning ahead means something along the lines of, if you're going to leave your house in the morning and you're going to be gone basically all day, maybe you're doing chores, maybe you're running errands, planning ahead is having food with you, something available for your lunch so you avoid a fast food restaurant. They're easy to get into. It's The fast food lines work great. You can easily get a cheeseburger and fries and be out the door and there's your thousand calories like that. Oh, and throw in a soda, there's an extra 300 calories. Eating slower helps. Um, when we eat fast eat, we eat too fast for our stretch receptors in our stomach. So eating slower allows your brain to catch up with your diet. Um, eating mindfully is along the lines of eating slower, but it's also, of course, putting quality foods in your body. Um, stress, again, having your stress under control is super huge. Stress increases cortisol levels, which is increasing belly fat. Getting proper sleep helps lower stress, which of course, if you're having issues with your sleep, we also kind of have a, we have some people that work here that kind of work with that a little bit. It's kind of our forte. Um, definitely eating a little bit before you're hungry, which is also interesting for the fast when you first start. Um, some people may not benefit right away from the 16-8 window. You might need to start at 12-12, you might do 14-10, something to kind of wean you into that 16-8 window we'd like you in. Um, 
giving time. Weight loss does not happen overnight. Nobody got his, you know, to where they're at overnight, no one's gonna lose the weight overnight. And learning what kind of pings your hunger cues. Like, are you the type of person that is a grazer where you have food available consistently and it's easy to dip into a bag of chips and before you know it, you know, you've eaten an entire bag of chips? Or do you have cookies in the house and they're easy to just roll the sleeve back and eat five, 10 cookies and there's a thousand calories right there. We have a Facebook support group. This is something that um, all of us are posting in and you know, kind of get trying to get people involved and just give them information about their weight loss journey and support systems and recipes and workouts and ideas um, to help stay accountable. Um, if this is something interesting, uh, the next steps would be, of course, to contact us. There's a phone number available, 480-830-3900. Um, you can also go to the Valley Sleep Center website. and will lead you to the right direction. Schedule with one of our nurse practitioners for your first consultation. Um, we do have self-pay options for somebody that has a weight problem, might not have a sleep disorder. It's not typically with our patient demographic, but it does exist in this world. And that would be the end of that. So All right. let's open it up for questions. So if you have a question for Andrew, you can raise your hand. I can allow you to speak. Um, I have a question, Andrew. Go for it. With intermittent fasting, is does it matter when you do the exercise if you are at a point where you're building muscle? Or do you know if even doing intermittent fasting would be a negative thing if you were building muscle only? Like if you didn't have weight to lose, right? So yeah, so like you're a person that's trying to add muscle. So um, here's a cut. Here's a good example. Um, one of my coaches is he started intermittent fasting, and he was when he would come in in the morning and start working out, lifting weights, and start exercising. And he because your body's his body was so used to using and utilizing sugars for energy it took about three weeks to a month for his body to settle in to where he was actually feeling comfortable like in his workouts. The key for him was that during the time frames he was eating, that he was eating enough protein. And that was the key is that he'd have to consume probably 20% more protein during his eating schedule that would sustain him through his workouts. You know, carbohydrates were also part, but they were nutrient dense carbs, like, you know, of course, the quinoa, brown rice, that sort of stuff. Right. So it does take a little bit of um, work to learn the bot for the body to learn that it's not going to be fed food to exercise. So, you know, when a person exercises is it's your, it's your call. I mean, ultimately I'm a big facilitator of exercising in the morning because you get it out of the way. Yeah. There's no, nothing happens during the day that prevents you from doing it in the evening. Your right. family can call you and say, hey, we're having a get together tonight. And you're like, oh, skip my workout. You don't have that. If you're up at five, six o'clock in the morning doing your workouts. It's gone. It's done. So um, there's a question here about your coach came in for workouts. He's asking if we have a facility for working out. Uh, we don't, um, but our private Facebook group, does have, I have some videos that we've been doing. In fact, on Monday, I'm recording another video with my trainer that are, those videos are exclusive to the group and you can do them on your own. You can watch them over and over. So we have a yoga video right now. We have a very beginning workout with Diane. On Monday, we're gonna do a little bit more advanced uh, workout. So, um, you know, definitely call us or raise your hand right now if you want someone to call you. Uh, one of you in the webinar is going to win a free consultation for this. So um, we will uh, definitely reach out to you, the winner, and um, keep asking questions. I'm just going to check my Facebook here. I don't see any questions there. Yeah, unfortunately, it's difficult for us as a company that to have like a facility only because there's five locations and we have patients all over the valley. If we physically had a facility to work out in, it would be it would be difficult for somebody to get into. I mean, right now, of course, the um, 
with the world, at least city of you know Arizona shutting down all the gyms again, it throw it's throwing wrenches in a lot of things. The, the whole, uh, of course, the whole shutdowns and COVID and stuff does limit the ability to get to a gym or work out. Um, that's where the at home stuff comes into play. And of course, if, as Lori said, we, we do post videos and post ideas on different workouts mm -hmm. for patients that need that. Yeah. So Diane, my trainer is doing a class every Wednesday on zoom for $5. I mean, so we're going to do stuff for you for free um, as part of the program. But you know, if you're interested in joining that with, I, I love the zoom workouts because you can do them from home. And if you pay a little bit, you're accountable uh, and you show up like you do it. Like I would have never thought I would have worked out this way, but I've been doing it from here and I love it. I, it's keeping me in shape. Um, I, I'm fortunate that I can go outside here. Uh, I know we can't do that in Arizona right now, but um, you know, I wanted to suggest to you, I've just discovered this. It's vitamin water zero. Can you guys see it? Love those. Oh, so Costco has a whole pack of them with lemonade, orange, and it's like a grape flavor, I think. The purple one, I love the purple one. So Diane got me super turned on to these. So the other thing I do is I have my gallon jug of water, like I drink uh, close to 64 ounces. At, no, 120, sorry, 128 yeah. um, every day because you should drink 0.67 times your body weight and water in ounces. So I think mine's like around 90 something ounces. So sometimes I get really, I don't want to drink just plain water. So I'll dump this in ice and water and like water it down. And it's so delicious. So this is, you know, vitamin water zero, but you got to get the, the zero because it's, it's sweet because it has stevia in it, which stevia is one of our approved sweeteners that we can do. Doesn't spike glu uh, glucose. Yeah. insulin. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. If nobody else has any more questions, um, we will let you guys get back to your afternoon. Andrew, thank you so much always for your insight, and uh, we'll see everybody soon. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.